It's Monday, August 21st. Zach, what's on the show today? Hey, we've got a loaded show today. We've got a couple of guests here from Casa of the Bluegrass to talk about their upcoming fundraiser, uh, Taste of the Trace. So we'll get into all of that. And uh, we had Game of the Week. Football kicked off on Friday night. So we'll talk a little bit about that too. And also, just like I said, lots to do in our community calendar. Uh, let's get this week started. Yeah. Let's go. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Round 10, Frankfurt's Morning Show. I'm Scott Stafford, and next to me is Zach Hubbard. Good morning, Zach. Morning, Scott. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing on this I'm Monday? doing fantastic. Did you have a good weekend? Had a good weekend. Um, Friday night, I think we went to uh, Spots and got some gelato. Oh. And met a, a viewer of the program. Nice. And she was very nice, and she said um, she usually catches it at uh, eleven o'clock in at, at night. At night, oh. so we we go head to head with the with the late show yeah. folks. All right, um, I love to hear that because that that makes me. I, I'll think of her right when I'm putting it into the schedule. I'm like, yes, somebody is watching at eleven p.m. I'm doing good there. Yeah, she she gave me another note. She said she said two o'clock is a, is a perfect time for the replays because she said there's absolutely oh. nothing on TV at two o'clock. So that's that, good. That's no. A, it's a good time for us. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. But I'll she's very nice. Yeah. And so shout out to, to her and, and thanks for watching. It's always nice uh, when you all say hello out yeah, there and yeah, let us that. know you're watching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. If you see us like out like at the grocery store or something, mm-hmm. that, I've gotten that a couple of times where you'll see somebody and they're they're kind of giving you an extra look. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they know that they know you from somewhere. But yeah. Like, yeah. by all means, say hi. Yeah, yeah. She, don't I, she hit me with, I know you. Yeah. You don't know me, but that's I fine. know you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you? What's that? The weekend? Yeah, the weekend. Uh, weekend was good. I was trying to think of what we did. What worked Friday night, which we'll talk about in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think of what we did. Oh, I went to a Reds game Saturday. That's what I did. Okay. And it was fun. They lost, but it was still exciting. They're way so, more fun this year than that was they had Saturday. That was Saturday. Was the was the Kentucky sports radio game? Was that yeah? Part of that? The, <laughs> yeah, on the on the the screen there. I'm like that looks a whole lot like Matt Jones. Uh-huh, and, yeah, yeah, and that then they were like game. the Kentucky sports the, the radio invited up to have their day. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, they threw out the opening pitch, I think, and or maybe I don't somebody know. They, they somebody that played for the New York Knicks. Okay, so never did. mind that. I okay. don't know if they do multiple. They sometimes they, they do they multiple. Do. They pitches. do like ceremonial. Yeah, ones, so maybe they did. So like, they may have yeah. had one of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think they took 400 people from around this area no who were up there. Yeah, that's uh, cool. But I, I did hear a pretty loud like C A T S chant <laughs> from from like off to the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did they win? No. Oh, okay. No, they lost. It was four to three, but it was close and it was exciting. But okay. they they uh, they got beat pretty bad yesterday by the same mm-hmm. team, Blue mm-hmm. Jays. Which the Toronto Blue Jays fans travel. I didn't know this, but there was a large contingent of Toronto fans too. That's weird. That's weird. But apparently, it is. It's not that bad. It's just you just go straight down seventy five yeah. for yeah. however many hours. But. Uh, but yeah, we had our first game of the week on Friday. Tell me about it. Yeah, we were at Frankfurt High. Um, it was, uh, unfortunately for the home team, it was a one-sided contest as the Paris Greyhounds came into town and they, uh, beat Frankfurt High Panthers 50 to nothing. Uh, so it's, a, there's a lot to, you know, a lot to work through there. That's actually a, fr- uh, Paris, you know, working off of a, <laughs> a kind of broken play there, but they just sort of always had the, the Frankfurt High Panthers number and, and uh, penalties got in the way. Yeah, a lot of I think there's a lot of young kids kind of learning the game and learning it's what re- you can do and yeah. can't do. Yeah. yeah, it's a rebuilding time at it Frankfurt. Is. It is. Um, uh, go ahead. Well, and we you know we had uh, Coach Davis on the show yes. uh, uh-huh. about a month ago or this summer and talk about the program and and I'm I'm excited for the future for the Panthers. And, but they you know they got to work work out some of the kinks early on in the season this first first game of the season first home game a lot of expectation and you know mm-hmm. i was watching uh kind of came and went during yeah. the, the the broadcast everything looked good and you guys were doing a good job as always uh at the very end of the game 
uh, Clint uh, Goins uh, on play-by-play seemed a little upset at, at maybe uh, running up the score he felt like there at the end. Uh, maybe. Paris. And I can't, I don't know. I, it's one of those things. Like, you can't, yeah. They're they're practicing stuff too. I mean, I know they were doing like onside kicks when they were up fifty four to two to nothing. And like, not cool at all. I get it, but they're also they're practicing for the rest of the season. What better way to do stuff like that? But I I I told him. I mean, when you're covering a game and when you want to see your home team do well, you don't like seeing a traveling team kind of run the score up like that. But from a Paris perspective. I get it, like real reps for these kids yeah, to practice but some of those things. You don't but. do an onside kick if you're up four. It's not a great it's you know, it's not a great look. No. But, yeah. uh, Especially in high school. All right. Yeah. But you know, it's the start of a new era at, at That's Frankfurt right. and, and yeah. things are gonna keep getting better there. Mm-hmm. And uh so tough, and, tough week, week one, but I'm sure right. he'll have some uh some better games. excited to see him, yeah, progress and continue mm-hmm. and I'm I'm sure he'll get better there. Yeah. And then um also just excited for the game of the week season to get yeah. going in football. And yeah. we'll, have, we'll be at Western Hills on Friday. So another new coach in town uh-huh. and Coach yeah. Vanderpool. Yeah. So it's a big, it's a big turnover. Be fun. Here. Yeah. Um, Women's World Cup ended. They had the final this yeah. weekend. Yeah, that's right. I, I was, I was down bad for teams that I was rooting for. Spain won. Congrats yeah, there to them. There they are. I, you know, of course, was rooting for USA, and then they had the early exit, the shocking exit, and mm-hmm. then I was kind of rooting for Australia, and then they made it and lost to England in the semis, and then mm-hmm. England lost. I was kind of rooting for them in the final. So, yeah. uh, tough World Cup for teams I was kind of rooting for. <laughs> so, but keep uh, your teams away from Zach. <laughs> yeah, but it was nice for for Spain to win. It was the first time uh, uh, yeah. for them, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's sort of yeah, new between team. Spain and England. Neither of those teams have won the right. World Cup, so. Mm-hmm. I, I love that for them. Uh, and then I think the the young woman who uh, scored the goal, the one the one in the one to nothing win over England, uh, they were accepting their trophies, and and she got uh, more than she'd bargained for from the head of the federation. Goodness, who gave her a smooch right on the mouth? <laughs> wow, not not, <laughs> and she did not appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I as she said later. Imagine. I think I guess he got carried away with himself. So okay. poor form. And maybe former form. head of the federation. Yeah, hopefully. maybe so. Good Lord. Maybe so. And they were they, they, they there was he was already kind of embroiled in uh, some uh, uh, some things as uh, be- leading up to the World Cup. There mm-hmm. was a lot of uh, the players were not satisfied with the the way they had been treated and 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 sure. um, things like that. And yeah. the, 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 they weren't treated with enough respect and and uh, kind of asking for things and he kind of fought against them in a lot of respects and then so i don't know that guy <laughs> i don't know wow. I, I was happy to see one of the english players snubbed the fifa president for a handshake though because oh. he was like women need to earn their equality in sports I'm like, what's wrong with you okay, so they okay. did not give him a handshake and i appreciate that all right um well, uh, today is moving on. Today is National Spumoni Day. <laughs> yeah, I've never. I don't. This think is Spumoni had, right here. I've never had Spumoni. Me before. neither. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know if that's a pistachio at the top, maybe there, but we got some cherries in the mix and mm-hmm. maybe some chocolate down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, somebody will have to tell me what Spumoni is. I mean, it's clearly <laughs> some kind of frozen <laughs> cake right. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um. They, they they called it a lasagna in the in the control booth earlier, uh, but uh, we're, so we, that has inspired us to ask you the question of the day: mm-hmm. What's the ultimate ice cream flavor? Yeah, so I'm guessing that's that's like an ice cream kind of dessert, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's sort of what it looks like. Kind of a Neapolitan type of something. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're watching on Facebook, uh, hit us uh, in the comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, answer that question. Anything else we talk about at all today? Comment along. We'll get to. Yeah, the, we'll, we we monitor it as the show goes on, and we we read those out and kind of have a back and forth with you all. But if you're not watching on Facebook, that's okay because we've got the text machine five zero two three five three zero two three three. Just send us a text there, uh, whether you're watching live or after uh, on a replay, and we'll see them. All right, uh, Zach, do you have an answer to this question? Um, I, I feel like I have to go with uh, like kind of cookies and cream. I don't know if that's basic, but I, any, anywhere I go that has a cookies and cream option mm-hmm. is usually where I'm going with this. So. One of the classics. Yeah. Do you think it's, do you think it's uh, where does it fall in the order of, of like the Mount Rushmore flavors? Is it vanilla and, and chocolate are at the top, and then it's 
cookies and cream maybe the next it's on the list? Of, I don't know. It's sort of a variation, but I, yeah. don't, I don't know. I don't know that I have a Rushmore of. Because I, I, I feel like I, feel I, I like, jump all over the place. I wouldn't be surprised if it's those are the top two sellers and then Cookies and Cream was next. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know yeah. what the answer is, mm-hmm. but uh, we can probably find out. Pretty I do well. love a sherbet as well. You do? Yeah, What's I your favorite sherbet? Any, I mean, really, almost any of them. Like, orange is uh-huh. probably the top, but yeah. yeah. And any of the kind of flavors like that. Yeah, you like the, you like the dream sickle, the vanilla, and the orange sherbet yes. mixed together? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, two of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, uh, so I'm gonna I won't go. Let those comments roll through too. Yeah, but yeah. What do you have? I'm gonna go vanilla. Okay. The ultimate. So there, you could have some debate on what the ultimate means, uh, but so I'll, I'll I'll ride or die with vanilla. <laughs> all right. I think it's always the top selling, like mm-hmm. by far the top selling ice cream flavor. So first of all, people act like it's water. Like vanilla ice cream is not water. It has a. It is a flavor. It has an unfortunate connotation for vanilla being like basic, yeah. no flavor kind of. And that's because it is also like the perfect canvas for anything you want to add to it. <laughs> so like you cookies. got you got that going for it. you can just right, yeah, you can yeah. just turn it into like you can add throw things at it and it's a perfect receptacle for all these things and, and mm-hmm. uh, but it is a flavor like and it's a very good flavor. It's subtle. But vanilla is a delicious flavor that if we didn't have it, if you took it away, like let's say you took it away for 50 years and people forgot what <laughs> vanilla was, and then you brought it back and yeah. it said, taste this, they'd be like, wow, this tastes pro- yeah, great. But right. to them, it's just like, it's a nothing. But uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the ultimate ice cream flavor is still vanilla. Yeah. Okay. The OG. That's a good, I think that's a good call. All right. I don't have any disrespect for it it's one of my favorites too we'll see what everybody else thinks as we get into this but uh we'll let you you all start piling in some answers so we can get to them all at once but uh, we need to open up the community calendar We are very excited to have Casey Atwood, Program Development Coordinator for Casa of the Bluegrass, and Tamara Harrod here on the show. Uh, she's a, one of the Board of Directors for Casa of the Bluegrass. Uh, thank you all so much for being on the show today. Yes, thank you, thank you for having us. So uh, let's start off, um, uh, for folks who don't know, Casa stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates of the Bluegrass. Uh, let's just talk about what your all's mission is and, um, and what you all do. Absolutely, yes. So CASA, being court-appointed special advocates, we provide advocates, volunteer advocates, to children in the family court system who have been impacted by child abuse, neglect, or dependency. Uh, These children are involved in the family court system through no fault of their own, and so we provide an advocate for them to speak on their behalf and to have their best interest in at heart whenever we go to court. Um, So we are often referred to as the eyes and ears of the family court judge. Um, And here in Franklin County, uh, Judge Williams does an amazing job of really incorporating the child's needs and wants as whenever he's making his decisions and figuring out what's best for this family. Uh, So we are very honored to be able to be a part of that process um, and to have the volunteers that we have, um, as well as the opportunity to get more volunteers, more people from the community that have a heart and passion for helping these children. Um, I did want to touch that we will be having an open house uh, on September 7th. It'll be at 530 here in Frankfurt at our CASA office, which is at 315 West West Main. Uh, it's in the county uh, clerk's office on the second floor. And that's just a really good opportunity uh, for people to learn about what CASA is and what it means to be a volunteer and other ways that you can support our program and our mission if volunteering is not in the cards for you. Uh, and following that, we will have a training at the end of September, uh, but we'll talk more about that at our open house information session. That's right. And then we'll, we'll have you all back on uh next month as well to help talk about uh, actual training and when that starts and absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, but but like you said the open house is a great opportunity for folks to to learn about casa and the volunteer opportunities and, and learn what's expected of them right and how many how many hours of training they need to do and maybe how many hours a week they're probably absolutely. expected mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. Um, and then so so that open house is at 5 30 on the 7th and then about eight days later 
big fundraiser, right? Taste yeah. of the Trace. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. tell us about that. Yes, um, Taste of the Trace, our theme again this year is uh, barbecue uh, boots and bourbon. It'll be at the clubhouse from 5.30 to 10. Our tours, tours will start at 5.30. Um, after you return from the tour, then you'll be greeted with Stacks Barbecue, which everyone Delicious. loves. Sure, and yeah. speaking of ice cream, Huggies ice cream will be on hand. Nice. So if you haven't decided what your favorite ice cream is after today, <laughs> you, have been, yeah. <laughs> you have an opportunity <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to uh, taste several flavors there. Uh, we'll also have battle axes on hand. So we'll, it's a portable uh, trailer, and you can uh, test out your throwing of an axe. Yeah. And it's <laughs> it looks easy but isn't quite it's as easy. It's definitely yeah, it's, it's yes. not not quite as easy as it looks I right mean, yeah, but it's sure. a lot of fun a fun, lot of yeah. fun um we will also have a silent auction and we'll have several things up for uh you to bid on from bourbon to art works um several experience items as well yes. oh, cool. uh, kind of getaways or yeah. uh, tickets to events Absolutely. Um, also, we'll have um, our Frankfurt native, Gibson Wright, performing, who's also recorded several hits in Nashville. He will be there live, and um, if you've not heard him, you need to come and check him out. If you have heard him, then you're going to want to come back and hear him again. Yeah. He is a really, really great country it's music amazing. singer. Yeah. Yes. He's from Frankfurt? Mm -hmm. Yes, huh. he is. I, never, I mean, I'm not, I do not have my finger on the pulse of country music. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, you should come and check it out. All yes, right. you should. Absolutely. Yes, you should. You should um, and then also um, he has uh, made his own special blend of bourbon just for our event and it's titled speak right up and it's speak up for the child but also incorporates his last name right w-r-i-g-h-t so that was a nice little kind of hit name. there too yeah. yes yes <laughs> yes so and we do have special spo uh, several sponsorship levels available if you would like to sponsor if you do not want to sponsor but you want to attend there's also you can uh, purchase an individual ticket the individual tickets are 75 dollars okay um, but the sponsorship levels that we have, the premiere is $2,500, and you get your name, your company name, on all of the material for the uh, headline sponsorship, the acknowledgement, um, promotional materials, um, on the invitations that go out, social media, and the evening program, you get a VIP reserve table for eight. So that is, that's a really great value for what you get there um, we also have a gold uh, level it's fifteen hundred dollars and you get a reserve table for six you have your um, major sponsor recognition at the event you'll also be on social media promotions and on the evening uh, program as well the next level down is the uh, silver and it's seven hundred and fifty dollars and with that you still get four tickets which is a really great deal and sponsor recognition on the program as well nice. now, um, is this probably your all's biggest fundraiser of the year right it sounds like it is for yeah. franklin county franklin definitely county. yes okay. we, we typically have two fundraisers a year and this one is specifically geared toward franklin and anderson county mm -hmm. our northern two counties of the fourth that we yes. serve mm -hmm. um, and it's just a fun event it's laid back it's enjoying great bourbon it's enjoying great music mm -hmm. um learning more about the casa mission but in a super fun way yes. um it, it's something i look forward to mm -hmm. every year yeah. absolutely and just an awesome community event too, and all it goes is. to a great cause. Mm -hmm. uh, and now when folks, that you said, how much was it for an individual ticket? $75? $75, dollars. Right? Okay. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We also do have an advocate level, which is $250, and you get two tickets with that as well, and your um, recognition on the sponsorship material oh. that night too. But one thing I did forget to mention is the photo booth. Oh, and fun. it is yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. They bring in all the props that mm -hmm. you could imagine. Everyone gets to dress up mm -hmm. and they take the photos for you. And you get yeah. on the photos right there on site, like a little strip of photos. And Just a really good oh, piece yeah. of memorabilia oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. from the night. Yes. Um, and you can purchase uh, tickets, individual tickets, yep. but as well as our sponsorships um, on our website at casaofthebluegrass.org. Um, or you can call our office um, and get more information about that if you're interested. And that's at 859 nine three six three five one zero um and we uh do still have tickets available and some sponsorships but okay. we would love to incorporate as much of the community as we can uh in this event nice uh anything else you guys want to mention about casa uh today uh, i mean we've we mentioned the uh, again the open house is on the 7th but the yeah. actual taste of the trace yeah. is on the 15th 
I've got I've got questions about cost and how it works, but I think I'm going to save those for them when they when we come back and do some of the training uh, talks. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's, as far as the the funds that that will be made in in this. Um, I'm, I'm assuming the administration and, and, and training costs and things like that. A- anything else that, that, I, that doesn't pop right into mind of what costs would use those funds for? Right. So at the end of the day, every uh, piece of money we can possibly get goes in some way, shape, or form to advocating for these children. Mm-hmm. A large part of that is providing the training materials, mm-hmm. training hours, and all of that that goes into getting an advocate right. ready to be able to be a part of a case. Which is a lot. Is yeah. a lot. Yeah. Um, but we're dealing with vulnerable, traumatized children here, right. so it takes a lot. Right. Um, and past that, of course, we do have administrative fees. But um, other than that, it's just spreading our mission mm-hmm. and providing uh, items for the children that we serve. Uh, we do a couple of small fundraisers a year to be able to provide them such things as um, Build-A-Bears and summer bags mm-hmm. so that they can have have a little bit of extra joy um, while they're going through this particularly terrible time. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day though, every dime that we get goes toward advocating for these children in some way, just being able to be the best advocates that we can for them. Um, and then before we let you go, uh, <laughs> to lighten things up, we got to ask you about ice cream. Uh, <laughs> what, what, is it, what would you all say is the ultimate flavor of ice cream? So I'm going to go with your choice, vanilla, okay. but add in some pralines, and that okay. is the bomb. There you go. There <laughs> you go. All right. So I'm, I'm a vanilla girl myself, but I have, uh, since being with my husband the last several years, he's kind of turned me into a mint chocolate chip fan. So uh-huh. I'm going to be in that boat, which I know isn't a super popular one. <laughs> that's my wife's that's favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife will go, uh, and, and, and it's funny to watch her kind of shift between Baskin Robbins <laughs> only like mint chocolate mm-hmm. chip and now uh, we're Briars is like, this is yeah. the best one. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Were you, were you reluctant? Were you kind of... A little. Okay. Um, I, I was before him. I was definitely a mint is only for gum kind of girl, but yeah, it works perfectly in ice cream, and I will fight anyone who yeah. begs it. Over. That is my daughter's favorite. Yeah. Chocolate chip. Yes. The chocolate. The chocolate takes it over the edge and makes it work. Uh, oh, sure. When I was a kid, yeah. that was one for, a, for there was a, a, a moment in time where that was my favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, good. It's good to have you all here, and we're looking forward to having you all back to learn more about the specifics of how the program works and how people can get involved. And, yeah. and go through the process. And again, Taste of the Trace is mm-hmm. September 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get tickets at casablubluegrass.com. Um, and if folks are unable to attend, they can also donate through there as Absolutely. well? Absolutely, okay, yes. There's several spots on our website uh, where we are always accepting donations. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can also find any of this information on our Facebook as well. That's right. And it shows the, the tiers, I believe, right? Yes, you were it does. About right sponsorship does. levels yes. and tickets. Awesome. Causeofthebluegrass.org. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Thanks, you all, for coming in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Next, Zach, we're going to uh, check in with our viewers and find out. uh, We're going to talk ice cream. That's right. Yeah. And then much more in our community calendar. We've got lots more in the calendar. We've got some hot topics, all that and more uh, coming up. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. FPB knows reliable internet is more important than ever. It lets us work from home share life with family and friends, and make vital connections online. To help, qualifying customers can now access the new affordable connectivity program and step up to fast, reliable FPB internet at a savings of up to $30 per month. Learn more about this new opportunity. Visit FPB online today. We're back. Uh, we asked you, what's the ultimate ice cream flavor? Uh, Zach, we've got a... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Jennifer on the text machine off off the bat. Okay. Oh, okay. What she's what she got? Vanilla is so boring with <laughs> multiple O's. <laughs> See, but vanilla, like I said, it gets a bad rap. It right? does get a bad rap. I think vanilla is great. I'm telling you, I think you're you just don't get it. If you think it's boring, 
You just it's it's the flavor, the same as any other flavor. And, and just because you're used to it and it's been around for a long time is why right. it's boring. I think. Well, and, and I, I get a little bit like if you're going to, you can get vanilla yes. ice cream at the store, right? Every day yeah. of the week. Mm-hmm. So I, I agree. do get like if you go to Hoggies or uh, spots or if you go somewhere where right. you're wanting a different kind of flavor profile, and, yeah. And Baskin Robbins, and then you you just go with like let me get four scoops of vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. It would be. I see that. Yeah. Like, oh, it would be right. weird to go into Baskin Robbins and just order vanilla, but I, obviously a lot of people do it. Uh, sure. But yeah, and th- that's why I go uh, milkshake vanilla milkshake at McDonald's is. Uh, no, not at McDonald's. I was like, <laughs> Baskin as as like Robbins. Ice cream Did I, do I keep saying McDonald's? Yeah. Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Baskin yeah, Robbins. yeah. Uh, okay. So, but she says, so it's so boring. Live it up, Scott. Uh, it goes great with fruit pie or strawberry shortcake. So many flavors. Uh, love banana ice cream, banana ice cream, and strawberry homemade banana. Interesting. Gross. I love banana pudding. I, I know. Yeah, banana's disgusting in all forms. Oh, wow. You are very wrong on that one. <laughs> no, bananas. Uh, what are some other comments? Uh, Leslie Smith says Rocky Road. That's a good call. Uh, is Rocky Road the same as like cookies and cream? Or am I wrong in that? Different. It's right? different. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe Leslie yeah. can. Co- oh, cookies and cream. Yeah, Rocky Road's totally different. What's yeah, it's Road? marshmallows, I think, and chocolate. Okay. And yeah, we'll look it up. Okay. Uh, Papa says, I'm really game for any ice cream, but the best to me is a really chunky mint chocolate chip. So Chunky just, chocolate chip. Chunky. So big old chunks of chocolate. But mint. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stephanie, she says, chocolate ice cream with a smooth peanut butter ribbon. Nice. Like that. Uh, Lena says, raspberry with chocolate chunks. That's, oh yeah. You put, put like raspberry in chocolate, like I'm right there with you. Uh, Lorraine says butterscotch or caramel. That's a good call, too. Um, Leslie also says Tillamook ba- old fashioned vanilla is really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tillamook makes good stuff. Uh, I, I'm sure if I recognize the brand, if I saw like the logo, I might, uh-huh. I might yeah. recognize it. Yeah. Um, and then Kim Bay says it's so hard to choose. I loved butterscotch as a kid, but haven't been able to find any in a while. Huh. Uh, she says Hoggy has Hoggies has chocolate cookies and cream that is delicious. Okay. Um, yep. And then we've got some uh, comments about Casa. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tammy says all volunteers required to be supervised by a trained staff member. Uh, we'll we'll get into all that. And, and when she says, yeah, great job, uh, Casey and Tammy. Yeah, absolutely. Casa. And yeah, uh-huh. and we're gonna learn more job. about uh, Casa uh, coming and, up. And so. like the and what what it what it means to be a volunteer right. and how mm-hmm. much time is kind of expected. And so yeah, we'll we'll have that next uh, next month I think after they. Uh, have their their big fun reviews. yeah zach mcdonald's I, i'm good with sherbet's too uh i like the the offbeat ones though like raspberry oh yeah for sure yeah um and then uh, amanda says moose tracks that's a good call too uh for ice cream is, is moose tracks is similar to turtle i think uh I think. yeah so rocky road is uh marshmallows yeah and well, that's the like the main thing uh what else We'll find it. Uh, and Moose Tracks uh, usually is vanilla ice cream with peanut butter cups and famous Moose Tracks fudge. Okay. Uh, and Brett is, he was sent one in on the text machine. Uh, mm. Basic is strawberry. So that's his kind of, kind of baseline base level. top. Okay. I like that. And uh, next level is key lime pie oh. or cotton candy where available. Okay. I like those. Hmm. That's good options. Um, yeah, there was something at Baskin Robin. They did some sort of uh, when when Papa mentioned sherbet too and raspberry. Yeah, they they had it was some sort of combination of two or three different uh, sherbet they had thrown together, and I I enjoyed that quite a bit too. The sherbet the name of it have gotten harder to find. Uh, I wonder okay. if anybody yeah, anybody has noticed that out there. Any of our viewers who like the sherbets, uh, we do. Um, since I mean the family since before I was born has always done lime sherbet punch mm-hmm. for for Christmas and New Year's they'll make that it's like our end of the, just once a year we do that yeah and it has become increasingly difficult to the point of all nearly impossible to find lime sherbet uh, and especially at that time of the year because almost nobody carries it anymore and the ones that do it gets bought out and uh, but 
we were struggling with people buying it out. Now it's just like you can't find it anywhere. Like nobody has it, period. And I can't remember where somebody finally did found, found it. It's, we, we thought this is the first year. It's not happening. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, we've, we've, we pushed our luck too many times, and it's just not <laughs> happening this yeah. year. But somebody finally did uh, come through at the very mm-hmm. last minute, to let the last store that got checked. Oh, wow. Somebody found it. I can't remember where. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Sherbert, uh, I feel like it's getting harder to find, at least Lime. Huh. Maybe maybe that version of it, yeah. Um, Less I know at Hoggies they have Superman Sherbert. They had that. It's like a swirl. It's like a three. Yeah, the, <laughs> it's good. yeah. The, the little one has had it, and she she likes rainbow everything, so she always wants that mm-hmm. one. And and she, the first time she had it, she went nuts for it. <laughs> uh, but now I think chocolate is kind of her favorite. But the, she still just struggles with the fact that this one looks like I want it more. But I think the actual oh, taste of yeah. chocolate she prefers. I understand that. Yeah, uh, it's let, a tough, tough lesson to learn. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like this colorful thing here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Leslie says pineapple sherbet is good and makes a nice punch. So yeah, a lot of people do pineapple for for the punch. Um, we we got we got the little one. We went to the zoo on Saturday. Oh, uh, which Louisville Zoo? Louisville Zoo. Louisville Louisville Zoo. Louisville, yeah. Nice. And uh, I got her some some rainbow dipping dots. Okay. You like the speaking of uh, ice cream? Do you like the Dippin' Dots? I don't really go for Dippin' Dots. I don't dislike them. Uh-huh. I just don't. I usually am not a let me put a bunch of stuff in my ice cream. Yeah, I'm kind of like it's it's just and no no fault to anybody else. That's just sort of a texture thing usually for me. I'm like so you don't like to I'm eat cool. a bunch of little little <laughs> dots. You'd rather just have regular ice cream. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Are you, uh, where you, are you in that camp? Are you? I, li- I like them, crow? but not as much as I like. I'll eat them, and they're they're good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I'm gonna choose regular ice cream. You know, if they're side by side. Yeah, and even at like an ice cream bar kind of situation, like I'm not putting a lot of. I'm usually not putting sprinkles and M and M's and all kinds of. Stuff yeah, no, I don't like do any of that. If it's cookies and cream, that's yeah. fine. Like yeah. an or an Oreo Blizzard or something. Yeah. That's that's great. I feel like people that but, do that are maniacs. Like if you're getting like. <laughs> I mean, if you're getting chocolate, kids are kids. They're going to do stupid stuff. Uh, but but if you're an adult, <laughs> if you're an adult and you're getting like chocolate ice cream and you're putting like gummy worms on them, like what are you doing? That makes no sense whatsoever. Just people just love the chaos. I don't know. I, it's not for me, but that's I'm, what I'm I, I can Maniac. see why people might enjoy it. Just the all kinds of different flavors and textures going on. But yeah, I guess usually, if that's your thing. But I'm yeah. with you. Yeah, no, keep just keep it keep it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just I appreciate just the regular kind of just ice cream by itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't Keep want to pure. go on too off too hard of a tangent, but the zoo was fun, right? Did you have a good time? Yeah, we had a good yeah. time. It got a little hot there in the later uh, in the did afternoon when we left. It was starting to get pretty hot. But did you all do the Laura Keat landing? You know, what? we did not. We uh, saw it. <gasps> we considered it briefly. But uh, yeah, we, we, that was last last part of you know of the loop, and it was real oh, hot, and yeah. it was like so. Maybe if that had been like the beginning of the time, that's we were what there. we did. We made a beeline for Laura Key Land, and we went in July, and that was that was the thing that we were the most excited to do. And I knew Amanda was going to love it, and it was everything we yeah. wanted, and then some. So I think you paid three dollars, uh, and and my guess by the the name of it was you go in, and these birds can land on you. Is oh, that they how do it land works? on right, you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it can be overwhelming for kids because I, I could see I yes. mean, there were many a screaming child that when they walk yeah, in, they're yeah. just not. And they kind of try to warn you, like, hey, don't be alarmed. But, like, yeah. as soon as you open this thing, they are expecting food because <laughs> you have the cups, uh-huh, yeah. you know. So, like, they will bombard you. And yeah. that, that's all they want. They, they're not going to bother you. They just want the food, food you know. Yeah. And so they'll, they will sit on your hand and crawl up your arm. One sat on my shoulder for a few minutes and, like, chirped into my mm-hmm. ear. And they're they're – they're very uh, awesome birds, but they can if a, if a child is not ready for that, maybe they've only seen birds from the car or from mm-hmm. <laughs> elsewhere. Mm-hmm. It can be a little traumatizing, I'm sure. I, I think that makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I don't I don't think I'd take a kid in there for that reason. I don't think anybody I mean, almost none like of them could handle age. that. Like, yeah, be yeah. like above a certain. There was there was a couple in there that was like that is a like a baby. It's like a two year old yeah, baby. Yeah, maybe like, not a good idea. To, yeah. uh, the the butterfly thing would be a better. Oh yeah. In which locally there's um, mm-hmm. the butterfly mm-hmm. garden there over at yeah. uh, Wilson's Nursery. It's awesome, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the show, do you think we can come up with a consensus? Remember, this question is not what is your favorite. This is what is the ultimate ice well, cream flavor. Yeah. 
It's also, it's like, what does that mean? Like Exactly. But I want to try. Okay. And I'll decide. Like, is the ultimate warrior <laughs> the ultimate warrior? <laughs> the most ultimate he warrior? He is. He is the ultimate okay. warrior. He is the, and, and uh, let's let's just look up uh, the, the definition of ultimate real quick. Well, maybe we should probably do our community calendar well, a little let's, bit. Let's do it. And um, then, being yeah. or happening, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the best achievable or imaginable of its kind. There you go. Okay. The best achievable or imaginable of its kind. I'll, I'll let smarter minds come up with that one. <laughs> right, I'll, just, I'll right. stay in my lane. All right, let's let's do more calendar stuff. Uh, so today at 5.30 p.m., yep. we've got an AMA on the Creek on Georgetown Road. That's 3894 Georgetown Road uh, at AMA on the Creek. Join to learn about the monks, Tibet, the Dalai Lama. Mm-hmm. Ask questions to learn more about them and their practice. And then enjoy their beautiful Tashi Shishopa to mm-hmm. spread luck to us all. Suggested mm-hmm. donation is $10.00. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and, there, and then Ama, I guess it's Ama or Ama on the creek. Um, it, it's it's in the old Buck Run Church uh, there on Georgetown Road. Um, and okay. that, that's just sort of the, the venue, I guess. AMA is like a Q&A, right? Yes, but no. Oh, no. You're, you're right in, in internet speak, but uh-huh. this is actually called oh. Ama on the okay. creek or right. whatever. Right? Okay, Ama I got creek, you. Okay. Something like that. But, yo, you're right. That, that, like, in internet Reddit terms is, like, ask me anything in okay. right? AMA. Right. Yeah. So I got thrown off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's the monks, right? The Tibetan monks yeah. are, are And they are doing and, a Q&A. Yeah, and, and we had the story last week about uh, they were at the library um, that mm-hmm. Papa shot. Mm-hmm. And so this is, I think, their last day of events is, uh, is tonight. So if you wanted to check that out, you can tonight. Yep, Franklin County Farmer's Market tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. at Riverview Park. Uh, Mm -hmm. What else is going on? Uh, The newly renovated tennis and pickleball courts at Juniper Hill are set to open tomorrow. Get excited. Uh, City of Frankfurt Parks Recreation and Historic Sites uh, will host a ribbon-cutting event for the opening of the newly renovated tennis and pickleball courts on Tuesday. Uh, Public is invited to officially reopen the courts from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Jennifer Hill Park at 800 Louisville Road. The event will showcase three new tennis courts and the addition of two pickleball courts and will include notable speakers, free tennis and pickleball lessons. That's nice. Refreshments as well as information on the park's master plan. So lots to do there. Uh, Following the grand reopening, the courts will be open for public use during park hours dawn to dusk seven days a week that's the official opening uh just between you and me they, they're already open uh we saw we were over there last week and saw lots of people lots of people taking advantage nice. they were excited about the pickleball courts uh we played again last night over on this side of town yeah. I, you know what's funny I, not to go on too much of a tangent but i did see i've seen a little bit of back pickle, pickleball backlash oh yeah there's definitely on, on backlash the out there. i mean there's backlash on it's, everything it's this the main contention people have is the noise oh that's what I what saying. i saw was like why is this a sport well there's that I saw, too I, I, the, and i'm like i haven't heard that take before because i like, mean you yeah. were out there i'm like yeah dude it's a sport <laughs> i was yeah. breaking a sweat it's fun. it was a lot of fun yeah well people, i mean maybe i'm not out there on the wimbledon like mm-hmm. you know the final or something mm-hmm. but like come on yeah that's just your your regular grumps that that are doing that uh, you know and that, oh, they, sure. yeah, they can't don't like anything new and like yeah. to poo-poo on everything yeah they're like why is this on espn i saw right. that clip and it went kind of viral and it's yes just, but because it was like i don't know it was maybe the most boring looking pickleball i've ever seen and that's fair it yeah. this this that sport like who the people that are buying professional teams and whatnot your lebrons and like it is dumb like that that, that sport is not going to go over on tv it's just not like i've seen right I've, it's, it's a participatory participatory yeah. It's, sport it's, yeah it's, yeah and yeah, it's fun you, it's a nice way to get out there mm-hmm. and but it's not and, fun and to watch it's not fun to watch. <laughs> Especially when it was like, I think the clip that was generated was like four people and they yeah. were just sort of beat, 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 and you're barely moving. Was, and yeah. yeah. But like it was kind of fun to watch like McEnroe and, and uh, Andy Roddick play and Agassi. Oh, okay. But I mean, other than that, I got no interest in watching anybody play. <laughs> Uh, but it's a participatory sport. Right. Fun and, to play. And honest, honestly, I honestly love that there are more courts in Frankfurt for folks mm-hmm. to for folks to do that. Yeah, I, I remember when they opened these ones here at the park, I had never really even heard of what pickleball mm-hmm. was, let alone yeah. whether or not people were going to use it. Yeah. It took some time, but people are I think there Frankfurt was certainly ahead of the curve uh, yeah. on the pickleball uh, for sure. 
and simple science at the Paul Sawyer Public Library uh, in the youth program room tomorrow, August 22nd, from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, let's get messy with simple science experiments that are fun for all ages. Registration is required. And then also at the library on Tuesday, and this is in the river room, um, is tracking and tagging the monarch butterfly's fall migration. So it's uh, migrating monarch butterflies can be seen in Kentucky from late August through October. You can join wildlife biologist Michaela Rogers to learn about the biology of this species and the great migration the butterflies make to the high elevation fir forests of Mexico each fall. Hmm. Uh, participants will also learn about how they can get involved in monitoring monarchs, helping to enhance the understanding of this iconic butterfly and its remarkable journey. And this is sponsored by the Frankfurt Audubon Society and the Paul Sawyer Public Library. Yeah. But again, this is at the River Room Tuesday night at 6. Okay. Uh, we got family night, game night uh, at the library in the youth program room Tuesday uh, also, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Bond and play the analog way with classic board games approved for all ages. Registration is required and begins. Um, it began on August 7th. So uh, please register one adult member of your family for this event if you can. A few seats remain open. So there you go. Um, join them. On, you can join Dominion Senior Living on uh, of Frankfurt on Thursday at 3 p.m. Um, they're welcoming community officials and professionals to celebrate seniors in Franklin County. This event will be an opportunity to commemorate our seniors and the contributions they have made to the community, while also hearing from local professionals on the different resources throughout Frankfort and Franklin County that exist to enhance seniors' lives. Uh, there will be light refreshments. Members of the community as well as Franklin County seniors are invited to join this heartwarming gathering. Attendees will have the opportunity to socialize, share stories, and connect across generations. Dominion of Frankfort is excited to foster an atmosphere of appreciation and unity um you can rsvp uh through them i'm sure you can find their uh, information on uh, facebook or on google yeah dominionfrankfurt.com mm -hmm. uh mingle at the spring house thursday august 24th from 5 30 to 8 30 p.m join the frankfurt area chamber of commerce for an evening of mingling on the enchanting grounds of castle and key distillery enjoy a complimentary cocktail crafted by the castle and key mixologists live music and heavy heavy hors d'oeuvres heavy hors d'oeuvres I think I think I said heavy hors d'oeuvres I dropped both H's heavy hors d'oeuvres uh, <laughs> uh, presenting sponsor Whitaker Bank will donate $10 for every ticket sold to Fresh Start Frankfurt uh, it's $35 a person or $60 a couple with online registration $40 per person at the door cash or check only yeah we had Tish on the show uh, mm -hmm. Friday talking about yep. this event um, and real quick uh, sidebar Andy's watching Tell Hello, them good Andy. morning. Um, also, uh, chime in with the question of the day, Andy. Uh, talk about ice cream. Um, mm -hmm. You can weigh in on what's your favorite ice cream, but also the uh, we're asking for what the ultimate ice yeah. cream flavor is. So the let us know, Andy, and yeah. anybody else who's watching. Uh, nature weaving is going on at the Paul yeah. Sawyer Public Library. That's right. This is for teens in grades 6 through 12. You can learn about the wondrous native plants of Kentucky and make your own nature loom. Registration is not required, and this is in the youth program room at 6.30 on Thursday. Lots going on at the library. We always talk about yeah. it, but ugh, they just yeah. do amazing stuff. And are you ready to flex on the farm, Zach? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Friday, August 25th, this event will be a Flex Start PDGA sanctioned C tier disc golf tournament. Don't know what any of that means. <laughs> With cards of three to four players teeing off between 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday, the 25th. Speak English, Doc. <laughs> this will be one, uh, one round of 18 at West Sixth Farm Disc Golf Course. Uh, this event is hosted by Frankfurt Disc Golf Association, Inc., and yeah. awards will be presented by Bomb Discs. Yeah. Uh, this is a walk on Flex Start tournament with tea times although players are encouraged to sign up early in order for cards to gather in the weeks prior to the event all players must register pay and select a tea time using disc golf scene before starting their round mm -hmm. online registration will rem remain open until 6 p.m on the day of the event mm -hmm. entry fees are 25 dollars uh and then open is $35. Add $10 for all non -PD PDGA members. Okay. So, yeah. So, flex start. Flex start. Yeah. There you go. You can run through that. Uh, Just whenever you want to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And do you have you done disc golf? Have you done that? Before? I've never. Never. I've never done yeah. it. 
What about you? No, me neither. It looks it looks fun. Is that um, our next thing to try try it out? <laughs> it could be. Yeah, okay. I we I know a few people that can that can give us some some mm-hmm. pointers, but but when I watched uh, um, you know Shane's son uh, Kyle Shane Holt of, mm-hmm. of the Plant Board um, mm-hmm. participate and he won a tournament. Mm-hmm. I watched him like uh, perform or play, and we got footage here. We had a mm-hmm. piece on the show about mm-hmm. that like, a couple years ago. I remember that. Uh, but when he does it, I mean, it's like. You think like, oh, I'm just going out there and yeah, throwing no. a frisbee, and you think like I can make that work, mm-hmm. and then you just watch him like do one, and it like yeah. curved all the way out of the frame and back in. Like, yeah, you, you've got people. There's doing a lot of practice involved. Traditional like this, you've got little flips with yep. like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy. I think putting would be my favorite part of it, like the putting where you're uh, like in a yeah. certain spot and you kind of have like a low distance mm-hmm. or a low, yeah, yeah, small distance there, but like driving or just throw it and it's in the tree. <laughs> right? Yeah, I feel like that would definitely yeah. be me. Uh, we're showing Rear Window yeah, the, at the Grand. Grand. Grand Theater continuing their classics this summer. Uh, another Hitchcock. They had uh, Vertigo, right, a couple weeks ago. So they got another Hitchcock classic, and it's Rear Window that's playing Friday night at 7.30 at the Grand Theater. Uh, I've never seen Rear Window. I've never seen it. I know it's iconic, right? Is that the... Mm-hmm. One, is it Jimmy Stewart? Yep, Jimmy Stewart broke his leg. Witnesses, uh, yep, broke his leg, and, and he's, watching, he's sitting around. There's been so out many the window. like spoofs of that. Like mm-hmm. as a kid, yeah. like every cartoon had their rear window episode kind of deal. Or I just remember mm-hmm. there was a couple, like maybe Johnny Bravo or something. Yeah. Like, oh, hold on now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like everybody had their rear window kind of kind of deal. Classic concept. Yeah. Um, if that's not enough for you, Zach, uh, going on this week, we also caught up with community service librarian Diane Dahoney about August's biggest community outreach uh, event at Paul Sawyer Public Library, the Gathering of Authors, as well as July's most checked out books. Hi, my name is Diane Dahoney. I am the community service librarian with the Paul Sawyer Public Library. And today we're here to talk about some of the great things that we have going on downtown at Paul Sawyer. The main thing that we want to talk about today is an event that we have coming up on August 26th. Uh, That is our 14th gathering of authors. Saturday, August 26th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the River Room, the gathering of authors is a celebration of the rich tradition of literature here in Kentucky. This event features gifted writers from all over the bluegrass who play an integral role in our service to readers throughout Frankfurt and across the state. So the gathering um, is uh, sort of a mini book fair type atmosphere where we welcome authors from across the bluegrass to sell and sign their works as well as talk with you, the readers. The event is free to the public. You don't have to register. Just drop in on Saturday, August 26th between 10 and 2. It is a variety of uh, genres that we'll be including. If you notice, we've got two of our past Kentucky Poets Laureate. We have mystery writers, romance writers, fantasy authors, uh, poets, uh, just a little bit of everything. There really is something for every reader at the Gathering of Authors. Also today, we want to talk a little bit about... Um, some of the titles that are most checked out in July, number one, was Where the Crawdads Sing. And you may think, okay, that not that a little bit of an older book? Yes, it is. It came out in 2018. And, uh, of course, that's by Delia Owens. Uh, also in our top five checkouts for July were Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin, Happy Place by Emily Henry, Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano, and The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Uh, in FPB news, so the, first of all, the exciting stuff as usual. With Again, the, the, the library, library. Uh, knocking just, it out of the park. Amazing <laughs> just stuff. Just it done. Loved seeing the July's yeah. most checked out books there. Uh-huh. Uh, I recognized Tomorrow, Tomorrow, and Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, it's been on my list for a while. The cover looks amazing, and I've heard great things, but right. I haven't made it to it yet. Cool. I like it. Yeah. Uh, FPB Community Solar Program. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, FPB has local solar gardens. If you didn't know, we built our Mm -hmm. own out there. Um, Had the the ribbon cutting grant a little while ago. Yeah. So uh, basically, if, if you're interested in using solar energy, 
but maybe it's not something you want to do at your house or you're not able to do. A lot of people aren't able to do it at their home. Maybe they don't even, you know, they rent, so they don't have their own place where they can build a, a solar panels on. Uh, but it, it's, an, you know, it's a big deal, and it's a commitment in a lot of ways as far as construction goes and costs and, uh, and maintenance. Uh, so you want to use solar, this is a way to do it. You can buy blocks of our solar farm, and uh, grid and and do it that way so go to fpb.cc slash community solar for more info you, you pay a small fee to to lease the block and then the energy that it produces goes back onto your bill and 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 uh reduces the amount that you pay so uh yeah. it, it's it pretty much offsets and uh, in, in very closely uh, way to get some depending. renewable energy in your in your profile there yeah, absolutely it's something you're interested in you want to take part of very easy way to do it as yeah. easy as it gets absolutely uh let's find out what's coming up on cable 10 we got meetings on meetings on meetings the next two nights on cable 10 tonight at five o'clock city commission work session from last monday and then at 7.30, the Architectural Review Board, a.k.a. ARB, at uh, 7.30. This was a meeting that was uh, on Tuesday of last week. And then uh, tomorrow night, we'll have a live FPB Board of Directors regular meeting. They usually meet um, every third Tuesday, which would have been last week, but um, I think they had some scheduling stuff, so they pushed it to, to tomorrow. So it'll also be streaming on FPB's Facebook page and the Cable 10 YouTube channel. Boom. You did it. Boom. Uh, Andy says butter pecan. Yes. One of his favorites, but uh-huh. there's so many, it's hard to narrow it down to the best. See, I'm, I'm right there with you. If somebody just asks me if I want ice cream, yeah, I don't think it's going to be, yeah. What if we looked at it this way? Uh, what if the ultimate ice cream is the one that we're going to eradicate all other ice cream flavors from the face of the earth and you're only left with this one which one are you going to choose i feel like that's i mean that's probably the same as favorite but maybe that would change some people's minds like maybe like more people would go like, like oh, i have oh, to we have can't, ice cream yeah we can't eliminate vanilla because I mean, think of all the things it does i mean i'm not trying to start the great ice cream wars of 2023 i am you know i am <laughs> people will people will yeah Take up arms for that one. <laughs> uh, let's heat it up. Uh, next year, Zach, mm-hmm. child influencers can sue if earnings aren't set aside. Uh, big news today for all our child influencers uh, <laughs> viewers out there. Illinois is the first state in the U.S. to ensure child social media influencers are compensated for their work. Senator David Kaler of Peoria sponsored the bill that was signed into law and will go into effect July 1st, 2024. The rise of social media has given children new opportunities to earn a profit, uh, Kaler said in an emailed press release after the bill was signed last Friday afternoon. Many parents have taken this opportunity to pocket the money. Shocker. Uh, while making their children continue to work in these digital environments. Uh, I think we learned about the, the little Tay rapper, uh, who everybody, for a short time we thought was dead, and then we found out was not dead, thank goodness. But, uh, yeah, if you watch any of her uh, videos, it's pretty clear. that the, the, In a lot of these cases, the, the, the parents very influential in what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, like who else is holding the phone? And, and yeah, some and, and, and yeah, encouraging this and coming up with the concepts for what they're doing. And uh, anyway, mm-hmm. the idea for the law, which covers children under the age of 16, featured in monetized online platforms, includes vlogs, was uh, including vlogs, was brought to Kaler by a 15 year old in his district. Uh, the Democratic senator said many states already require parents to set aside earnings for child entertainers who perform in more traditional settings like movies and television. But Illinois' law uh, will be the first to specifically target social media kid fluencers, according to Landon Jacquino. Jacquino? Oh. Jacquino. I'm going to go with Jacquino. Uh, who is tracking child labor legislation for the National Conference of State Legislators. Late legislators. I, I actually didn't know this. That. that bit about states re- requiring parents to set aside earnings for uh, child entertainers yeah like a lot, lot I, I got, didn't know that 
Yeah, a lot, a lot of children entertainers got rooked big time for oh, decades. I, yeah, and decades. for sure. Yeah. I didn't, but I didn't know that it was actually like a yeah. a law now. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, don't do this to your kids. No, don't. I mean if they want to, I mean, if, they, if, they if they're really, excited about really it, really passionate about to. it, and they want to do it, then I, I fully support supporting them. You know, and but like also don't take the money. It's like, well, I took you to Burger King mm-hmm. twice last week, so I'm gonna pocket. A yeah. brand of ad money that you got, whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like maybe you'd set that aside for the kids' college fund yeah. or something. But but seriously, consider whether you even like if they want to do it and and don't don't push it. Don't you like oh if we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it right and we're gonna make we're gonna push you out there to try to make you, you know. There's a lot of weirdos out there, man. Like don't don't put don't expose your kids to. Well, there's also not a lot. I mean, social media is such a new thing that studies are still kind of yeah. being done and being yeah. out there of right. like what that means to mm-hmm. be immensely online mm-hmm. like that and and make your your living and be yeah, doing con- things like that, making content yeah. like they, you talk about like content creators, they just burn out yeah. big time because I mean, they have to constantly be thinking of new material. Think of the way it affected us to be judged by. 20 peers in a classroom you know and multiply that by millions like you 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 get you get popular and then all of a sudden like i don't like this video and you know people just just don't i mean just don't (laughs) just don't expose kids to this stuff (laughs) don't do that yeah uh extraordinary zach a Pennsylvania six-year-old's business upfront party in the back hairstyle has earned him the title of the 2023 Kids Mullet Champion. We know a little bit about the mullet championships mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. here in Franklin. Yeah. Uh, mullet Champ, the organization behind the USA Mullet Championships, announced Rory Ehrlich and his mullet dubbed the Cheddar Whiz. Mm-hmm. Won this. <laughs> Steve's kids mullet championships. I don't. Does the name like why do you like you don't have to name your hair? They I, do. Apparently, I, I, it's a right. thing. Yeah. The Pottstown boy and his hairdo came out on top in a field of three hundred other bemulleted kids, <laughs> aged three through eight. Bemulleted. Uh, the boy was awarded five thousand dollars in prize money. I uh, hope his parents don't do anything with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Which he said he plans to use to, quote, buy my sister an alpaca and to go to wing wow. night again and save a little money for wounded warriors. That's really sweet. What a good kid. Good kid. Buy uh, his sister an alpaca. <laughs> the second place award went to three-year-old Hawaii boy Ezekiel Arita and his hairstyle Mr. Aloha Mullet. <laughs> And the third place finisher was five-year-old Pennsylvania boy Camden Cunningham and his mullet, the commander. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mullet champ said registration is currently open for this year's men's and over 55 mullet contests and will run through August 31. So maybe there's still time to grow out your Kentucky yeah. waterfall. Apparently there's like a never ending supply of, of mullet uh, contests and championships. <laughs> like they're, they're, it's insane how many there are there's a like they keep talking about one on the radio like a three-year-old here in kentucky somewhere that is and his he has extraordinarily (laughs) long hair for a three-year-old but he's apparently he wins all over the place Mm -hmm. uh so anyway lots of mullet contests time to grow it zach time to time to do this i i mean i would have to really up the <laughs> something to get it's, more hair it's content yeah. it's good content for the show are you are how committed are you uh, i mean if somebody's willing to pay the medical bills or cost to the hair <laughs> transplants and all that junk. uh if you don't follow us on social media make sure you do that on facebook search for cable 10 follow the plant board's main page also subscribe on youtube uh, get all our archive programming there get live game of the week and uh, city meetings, whatnot. And if you have any comments or questions, send those to Cable10 at fewpb.com or send them to the text machine, 502-353-0233. And leave us a, 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 yeah. Five-star review. Five-star review on this QR code. Hit it up there. Point your camera phone at this. Yeah, and we want to thank uh, Brett Papa uh, for their production work on the show today. Uh, also thank Casey and uh, Tambra for coming on the show from Casa the Bluegrass. Uh, talking about Taste of the Trace. That is mm-hmm. September 15th. Lots of fundraising opportunities and volunteer stuff there for them. Speaking of the Louisville Zoo, Brett said uh, he loves the Dole Whip at the Louisville Zoo. A lot of people love the Dole Whip. Mm. Uh, it, it, people line up for, for miles at, at, at Disney World for the Dole Whip. 
Yeah. yeah. I, when we ate at the zoo, the food was way better than I thought it was. I don't know. It was just like the zoo food. Did I thought it was going to be. Ours was not so good. <laughs> Where, well, man, maybe it was a certain part you went to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I don't and, know. And, yeah. It looked, ours looked good, mm -hmm. and but both of I don't know. I was shocked. Yeah. I was like, this is way better than it has any business being. Yeah. I, I, maybe just an off day. I got a gyro, and it was not good. But, uh, but yeah. So what where did, what part did you eat in? Do you remember? I don't remember. Okay. No, right. I don't remember. I mean, it, was, it seemed like a safari kind of deal. Yeah, ours there. was too. And, and, and it depends on what you get. I mean, just see his luck <laughs> of the draw. Because they had a lot of stuff in that one. They like, did. They had a lot of like pizza, options too. burgers, yep. black bean burger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. I would like to have tried something else. Thanks, everybody, for watching. <laughs> And remember, uh, we'll be back on Wednesday. Yeah. With, uh, Kathy and Harvey. Kathy and Harvey. And remember, if it happens around town. It's on around 10. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. 